Okay, so this is a review of engineering economics, uh, and our purpose here is to uh, review the, the main principles uh, behind uh, the formulae, where do they come from, uh, and then we'll do some example problems, lots of example problems uh, using the, the basic formulae. Uh, and hopefully uh, we'll, we'll have enough time to get through all of the problems. If not, we'll do another video. Uh, and then in the next video, we'll, uh, we'll start with evaluation and depreciation problems. So, the basic idea is this. If I place $100 in my bank account that earns 10% interest per year, I can calculate how much I'll have at the end of one year, which is $100, right? So I put in $100 and I add 10% during that year and I'll end up with $100 at the end. How much will I have at the end of the second year? Well, uh, at the beginning of the first year, I have 100, or at the, at the end of the first year, I have $110 and I'll earn 10% on that amount. Uh, resulting in $121 after the second year. Now I can rewrite this. Uh, I originally put in $100. During the first year, I earned 10%. And then in the second year, I earned another 10% of what I had at the end of the first year. Uh, and if I uh, close these up a bit, um, you can see that I now have a what's called a compound interest formula. A 10% interest for two years. So after the second year, as I said, uh, this, is, this is what we'll have, $121. Um, after the nth year, this is the year, number of years or periods. Uh, after the nth year, we'll have this much. So if we can generalize this, uh, $100 is, is what I put in, that's the present value of my money. Uh, how much interest I make each year or each period is 10%. N is the number of years or periods. And then the amount at the end, the amount in my bank account at the end of N periods earning I interest is uh, the future value of my money, or F. So now this gives us the simple compound interest formula that you're all familiar with. So I can rewrite that in a more convenient form. So if I'm given F, I can find P just by multiplying by this, this number and vice versa. So let's take a look at uh, a couple of problems that use that formula. Uh, if I uh, deposit $1,000 in a savings account that pays 6% annual interest, and I leave all the interest in the account, that's the assumption, of course. So what's the account balance after three years? So if I put this in terms that uh, we're familiar with, I'm given uh, an interest rate number of years and a present value and I'm looking for the future value how much will be in there after three years so in other words that's uh, I'm given P I want to find F so I need to multiply P times F over P to get F well F over P is just the re reciprocal of this uh, so then I can plug in a thousand for P and 1.06 cubed to get $1,191. Now let's say I've inherited a small amount of money recently. I'd like to put enough away into a high interest bearing CD guaranteed 5% per year for three years. And I want to be able to buy my Mazda Miata at the end of that time. How much of my inheritance should I invest? The Miata costs fifteen thousand dollars. So again, if I pull out the the salient uh, details, the interest rate is five percent. The number of years is three, and the future value that I want is fifteen thousand at the end of those three years. 
how much money do I have to put in? In other words, find P. So I'm given F, now I want to find P. So again, P over F is this. If I multiply by F, I come out with the, the, uh, the present value that I need to put in. So what if I did not inherit any money recently? But I need a, uh, so I need a loan to buy the Mi Miata. I can get a 5% uh, a interest loan over a three year period. What will be my yearly payment if the Miata costs $15,000? So given the interest rate and the number of periods and the present worth, present value, I want to find a, um, a yearly payment. Well, now, I don't have anything right now to give me that. I now need a way to, to given P, find some regular payments. So we're going to take a look at, at this problem. So my loan amount is P. Say my yearly equal payment is A for my car loan. So I'm, I'm kind of simplifying things. I'm making it yearly. Okay. So for a loan with one payment at the end of one period, A would just be the future value of P, right? So A, really, that's just uh, the future value after one year. So P equals A over 1 plus I to the 1th. Now, if I wanted to make two equal payments, at the end of period one and another at the end of period two, I have two future values and I want their present values to add up to P. And so I'll make a, a, a payment after year one and another payment equal to that after year two. And these two present values, the present value of this payment plus the present value of this payment will equal P. My present value now, $15,000. What if I wanted a loan for N payments, N equal payments? So I could set up that equation. And if I simplify that, I get this summation. And if you go on to Wolfram, or some other, you know, some other uh, website that gives you um, the results of these kinds of summations, you'll find that, that, that that's this summation right here equals this formula. And if I solve for A, this is the capital recovery factor. So if I take out a loan at some interest rate over a period of N, periods. This is my period payment. And now I have a, a nice convenient formula P given A is this. <clears throat> so to summarize, we have the simple compound interest formula, and then we have the capital recovery factor. So given P, get A, get, given A, get, get P. Um, these really are all we need for now. So you can, of course, use Excel's present value function, but um, since you won't have Excel with you in the, uh, in the um, FE exam, it's probably not a good idea when doing these problems to use it. So let's revisit my Miata loan. Now I'm given the interest rate, remember, is 5%. Number of periods was three years. And I want to borrow $15,000. What would be my yearly payment? So given P, find A. So A is, is this and just plug in the numbers it comes out to $5,500 uh, $5, per year. Okay. But now, of course, we all know, whoops, look at that. We all know I uh, can't do a loan with yearly payments. I need to calculate monthly payments. 
So we'll revise this formula a bit and calculate, okay, I is the yearly interest divided by the number of periods in each year, the number of times we compound in each year. And then the number of periods is given by the number of years, N, times the number of compoundings in each year. That's the total number of periods that way. So we're given uh, interest rate of 5%. Number of years is 12. Oops, number of years should be 3. Excuse me, sorry about that. This should be a 3. This should be a 12, 12 times. There's 12 months in a year. And my monthly payment is A. And you'll see that uh, this N is taken care of in the formula. So given P, find A. So again, we'll plug, plug into this revised, slightly revised formula. And uh, I over M. So notice N is 3, and not what I put here. N is 3 times M is 12. And I'm left with 449.56 per month. Now, let's say I can't afford that. Let's say I can't afford $450 a month. So let's say uh, I only have $300 a month. So how much can I afford to, to borrow? To be paid in three years at 5% interest. So in this way, see now I have a, an A given and I want to find the present value, the, how much I'll, I'll be able to borrow. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I'll use this, this formula, P given A, and plug in the numbers. $300 is my, my monthly payment. 5%, the number of compoundings per year is 12, number of years is 3, and I end up with $10,000 that I can afford. And I think, uh, I think I'll stop the video here. We'll, we'll do another, uh, we'll continue on with, with the next uh, problem uh, in the next video.